Attention Kroger shoppers. Did you know there's a world of innovative services and patient care right in store? It's where an award-winning pharmacy and nationally recognized care come together. Connect with one of our licensed pharmacists today at your local Kroger and experience the care you and your family deserve. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Services and availability vary by location. Age and other restrictions may apply. For coverage, consult your health insurance company. Visit the pharmacy or our site for details. Welcome to After the Final Pour, brought to you by The Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Gold, joined always with... Brandon Winninger. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Tony. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm, it's for as much sleep that I got today. I'm actually still... I'm, I'm pretty tired. It'll be easy for me to go to bed after this. <laughs> yeah, I... Um, hey, what time did I go to bed? I, I came home. I didn't have another beer, I don't think. No, I think I had a little bit of bourbon, and then I was like, just sitting around, and I was like, I, I don't want to just sit here. I was like, I'm gonna go to bed. So literally, like, I was in bed by ten <laughs> ten thirty. As about and, the time I think we left around ten because they closed at ten. We are revolution, yeah. everybody. Yesterday for yeah, celebrating so, my birthday. Happy birthday! We did. Um, it. I made it. Yeah, so it was like ten thirty. I went to bed and then woke up at like seven. So, oh, who are you? And then had lunch at Old Irving. Ooh, what'd you get? I uh, got the burger of the week. What's the burger uh, of the week? It was a Mediterranean burger. It was pretty good. That sounds interesting. Kind of got put on the spot. I wasn't really sure what I wanted. Um, <laughs> and I I knew I didn't. Not that it, not, I, I never, there's never a time where I really say, no, I don't want wings. But um with the, I don't know, I was just, I was like, I had wings last time. I want to have something different. Yeah, for sure. And it sounded pretty good. And and then I ordered it. And then I came home and then I saw a pop-up or a thing on Facebook that the beer or the, the Mac of the month was Birria Mac and Cheese. And I was oh like, son God. of a bitch. Why did I, how did I, how did I miss that? How did I miss that? Yeah, um, I, would have, I probably would have went for that too. And their macaroni and cheese uh, <laughs> uh, portion sizes are huge. It, it's ridiculous yeah it's insane <laughs> yeah it is it is not a side that is a I mean, it is a massive like my mom got it the last time that uh, i took her there and then um we ended up taking some home she only had half of it because there was so much of it insane. yeah I, th- I think i ordered just i don't know why but i usually either do i i, I love the fries there but like i'll order a burger and i try to go like, oh, i'm gonna be healthy and order the side salad but one time they convinced me, they're like, oh, you should do the mac and cheese. It's really good here. I was like, okay, give me the mac and cheese. And they did. And I was, I'm like, that's a big freaking portion of mac and cheese just for the side. I was like, come <laughs> that's on, a, man. That's a main dish. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do awesome job there. Again, we are not sponsored by Old Irving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just love them. All right. So this is an after the final pour because, you know, it's uh, the week after a full episode and, I was very busy this week. Brandon, thank you for your help. Um, yeah, we did some drinking yesterday at Revolution for my birthday. A lot of fun. Um, saw some some friends and, and some family. It was great. And then Brandon graciously uh, purchased everybody a whole bunch of Taco Bell. Like a whole bunch of Taco Bell. Did you say it was $100 worth of Taco Bell? Um, it was not 100 It was close, though. <laughs> it was great. Everybody was happy. Although at first, not everybody was eating it. But then as the night went on little by little and after you left when i was standing around the table with uh, the last few people over there we all just started digging into it it's the first really? time i've ever, ever had a steak taco from them. oh yeah. yeah i'm a ground beef guy when i didn't to. know yeah I, I think i didn't know that they had steak tacos and i was just i was like i'm gonna just get some variety there were some ground beef ones in there maybe i, I, I did but... i had no i had i had a ground beef i had a ground beef i had a steak and then i think mike ended up with like a cheesy roll up and i had some oh, of the yeah. mexican i had some of the mexican pizza 
Nice. It had, it had been sitting there for too long, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a couple things left, and uh, Kevin, I gave him to Kevin to take home. So nice. Ke- thanks for making the after the final pour theme song. You got to take the Taco Bell home. <laughs> um, did anybody else show up afterwards? That no, no, that was it. That was that was nice. that was the crew. That was a, it. Was a good. It was a nice mix of people, people I wanted to hang out with, and everybody who was there. You know, we all either know each other or have gotten to know each other and it was like the best group of mix of friends that i could have had there so i was very happy so i appreciated everybody that came out for that now let's get to this brandon what are you drinking tonight for the after the final four dun, dun, dun. what am i drinking i was gonna hold i was gonna hold the can up to the screen but you can't see me because my video is not working and it's blurred out right now what you're drinking <laughs> I still can't it's see all it. a secret. Like you can't tell. Can you figure oh, it out? Uh, Lagunitas Tiki. Yep. Uh, I went with the Lagunitas Tiki Fusion Zombie uh, Cocktail Inspired IPA. I haven't had it yet. It's been sitting, I think I bought it in like November-ish. Should still be good. Um, and it's been sitting there and I keep telling myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink that one day. And then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to drink tonight. And that was it. That was the winner. I, uh, I almost grabbed us i was gonna drop it off new Ooh. belgium's voodoo ranger hard tea Ooh. We, we've talked about trying that and they had yeah. two flavors over at Benny's. um and i was like i don't know if i want a hard tea tonight so i ended up going with she'll know that's she'll know uh by hidden hand brewing i think it's the first beer i've ever had from hidden hand where um, are they out of you know what? I meant to look that shit up before I uh, started doing it. They're in Naperville. Okay. So Never heard uh, of them. I'm sure I've had one, but I don't think I have. Uh, yeah, it's an IPA uh, with Citra and Motuika. I'm going to read the description real quick. Okay. An absurd and outrageous candied citrus collage of Southern Hemisphere's idiomatic borrowing. Sorry, I went back to Hemisphere and couldn't <laughs> make sure I was saying that correctly. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, it's an IPA, but you know what? This looks like a hazy IPA to me. Ooh, nice. Smells really good. I'm going to go in for my first sip here. Do you want to read? Is there a description of, uh, the Lagunitas Tiki torch? I pulled that up. So, uh, a forewarning for your senses. This exotic fusion of flavors has been crafted to conjure cocktailian notes of orange juice, fresh lime, grapefruit, and allspice and brewed with, without summoning any liquor spirits. Our homage to the original zombie and tiki movement, both created in our home state of California, B-Y-O-T-U, naturally. So bring your own tiny umbrella. Cheers. Got it. (laughs) So it's an IPA, correct? Correct. Inspired by the zombie tiki drink. Indeed. Indeed. Have you taken a sip yet? I have. What does it taste like? Give Give me all your tasting notes. It looks It looks good. Yeah, it's kind of lager-esque in color here. I'm going to turn my background thing. Right. It's kind of blurred off. It looks like you're showing things that are inappropriate, so your computer blurs it out. Yeah, so I just go like this every time and like act like I'm lifting up my shirt. <laughs> oh, not, it's funny. Oh, God, I got a nipple. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like lager-esque. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks it looks very pale yellowish. It, you'll notice I'm... Yeah, you're not- like the first time I'm in my office for a while in... I think like the first two recordings we did during the pandemic, I sat in my office a couple a couple of times, and then I went back out to just sitting at the bar. But um, Becca was doing some laundry, so I didn't want to. I was like, I, I can sit in here and not have the background noise. So yeah, yeah. It's, actually, it's kind of nice to just be in the office. It's kind of cool. No, but um, it's pretty good. Uh, the first sip I took, I was kind of like, mm, no. And I don't know what it was. There was like just a big punch of some flavor that I just didn't like. But now going back in for another sip, um, it's a lot more pleasant. It was probably um, the zombie. The zombie bit you. Yeah, bitch. Um, but I've gotten um, uh, more of the grapefruit. I'm getting the grapefruit. Not so much allspice, but there's grapefruit and lime. Um, and I guess you yeah, had like a tinge of orange juice. And it, it feels very... It does not feel like an IPA. It doesn't feel there's no hop bitterness or anything like that, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's just it kind of reminds me of like a malt beverage. Interesting. Yeah. 
Which is funny because it didn't sound like that. That's what they were going for. Like no, no. and it's and it's not so. It like you know, typically when you get like those malt beverages, it'll say malt beverage with you know natural flavors. This says ale with natural flavors. So interesting. Yeah, I wish it would said uh, what it said like what the the hops used on here were. Um, but anyway, so I mean, that being said, like there being no hot bitterness, it's not a bad, it's not a bad drink. I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, this would be uh, definitely a good hot weather beer um, because it, it's got that kind of like tropical vibe to it. So I, I could totally, I, I would totally do this again probably in the summer. Um, yep. And I would like to have it like super fresh. I'm not saying that this is bad by by any means, but having it super fresh, I think um, I'd be curious to see if maybe more of that hot bitterness is there or if there is any hot bitterness. Um, but yeah, uh, for what it is, it's super smooth. Um, the, the aroma on it is fantastic. It's very tropical and I, I enjoy that. Um, it's uh, it's a high alcohol one too. Huh? Oh yeah, it's 10%. It's not Just overly the... not overly carbonated. Is it boozy but, at all? Like, does it come off? A little boozy? bit, a little bit on the back end. Get a <laughs> little bit, a little bit. Um, but which is funny because I feel like I'm getting a little more booziness off this than I would like on like a a very heavily hopped like double or triple IPA that's clocking in around ten percent. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't get much booze out of you know if it's done well, I don't get booze out of those. I get just like the hoppiness. Right. Um, and you know the the maltiness and all that kind of stuff, but this is like you're getting all those flavors, and then you're kind of getting like you, the essence of booze, which again complements the drink because it's supposed to replicate this this you know mixed drink already. So not bad. How many uh, umbrellas are you going to give this one, Brandon? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do three eight. I think. All right, I think that's. It's very nice of you. The kids on uh, Untapped overall, it comes out to a three point two eight out of the almost four thousand ratings. Really? Has. Yeah, three point two eight is. The oh, I like it. This. So this hidden hand, she'll know. Um, it is six point five percent ABV. IBUs aren't listed because guess what? It's a New England hazy, according to Untapped, but not on the can. On the can, it just says IPA. So. Not that I'm mad that I got a hazy, but there was a couple other hazies that I saw, and I was like, you know what? I just kind of like a regular IPA, and I'm, I've, I've, I feel like my whole love of hazy IPAs is coming, coming to an end here. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some ones I really enjoy, but I used to be able to just like drink hazy IPAs all the time, like get different hazy IPAs and just be able to drink those. And now it just it, it feels like a chore sometimes to drink them. I mean, there's a handful of local ones that I don't mind drinking and, and trying, especially when they do like uh, variants of it. But this one in particular, this one is not hard to drink. It is very pleasant. It is uh, hazy. It's got like, you know, I'm, Brandy, you can't see it, but I'm drinking out of my this past last year's drink, Illinois uh, beer glass. Mm-hmm. from uh, Illinois Craft Beer Guild, uh, from Illinois Craft Beer Week. Uh, it's orange, hazy. It smells very fruity. It smells like grapefruit. Like, okay. um, definitely that type of citrus because there's like, not an astringency, but grapefruit to me is a little bit more harsh on the nose than like, yeah. say, orange or lime or lemon. Uh, and I like that. I think that that goes well with this style. I think grapefruit is what I enjoy most out of uh, some IPAs. Okay. Not some IPAs, but a lot of IPAs. I Citrus notes, I prefer the grapefruity to it. I don't know if like I wanted like candy orange or something because then all of a sudden I think like, mm, those are old hops in there and it's bad yeah. homebrew. Uh, but overall, um, like I said, I, I don't think I've had anything by Hidden Hand. Um that I, I mean, I, I should, I guess I could see if I signed it. I, I haven't been, I have not been uh, checking in beers very much on untapped. So it's hard to know if I'm, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, checking in beers. I mean, they are a subsidiary of Salamoth, though. Really? Yeah. I have checked in one beer. Uh... I've checked in one beer. What have I checked in by Hidden Hand? Here we go. Let's find out. Here's the big reveal that everyone's been waiting for. It's been on your mind. The 77 by Hidden Hand. Okay. I had that. 
last year with you, Mike, and Ron at Beer on the Wall. So I have okay. had, I have had a beer by them. And uh, I wonder what the 77 is. I gave it a three and a half. Okay. Ooh, it's a light lager. Oh, yeah. I remember this little beer. So, yeah, I've only had one one other beer by them. Uh, and this one, this one's pretty good. They have a whole bunch of, of beers because I was trying to like, oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Dishwasher's done. <laughs> Um, it's a nice to have a dishwasher. Yeah, it's great. Um, Thanks, Mike. <laughs> uh, there are they have a ton of beers. Looks like they focus primarily on IPAs. Just a bunch so, of IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPA. One stout so far I've seen. The yeah, I pulled up their I pulled up their website. Um, I do like the fact that it shows the package dates mm-hmm. for their their stuff on there. That's kind of cool. Which is funny because easy. if you look up, she'll know the first time it was packaged. I think it's the first time they were packaged because it was packaged on oh, okay uh, May third, twenty twenty one. I hope it's not from May third, twenty twenty one. I don't believe it is. If it is, damn that beer held up really well. Just it was just really heavily hopped beer. So. <laughs> Uh, looks like it's according to their website their first looks like their first beer may 3rd 2021 is called okay. alice double ipa and this one also came out which she'll know so that's cool so their first two beers look like a an ipa and a double ipa so yeah nice. I, I, i'll definitely i'll definitely give other beers a try i've been finding that i'm more interested in like fruited sours i told okay. you I, I picked up you know some other beers i forgot Again, I didn't check those in because I had one. I don't remember the brewery, but it was a mojito inspired beer, and it was really good. Ooh, there was there was, there was a hint of mint in there that was perfect. It was so tasty. <laughs> it was reminiscent of a, a mojito for sure. Then I had another one that was a yuzu farmhouse that I didn't really care for. Okay. It was okay. Uh, my problem with it was that I don't know when I when I read the yuzu, I wanted to taste yuzu a lot, like. Not a lot like that was like, you know, overbearing. Cause I mean, it is a farmhouse. A farmhouse mm-hmm. beer is not, you know, super strong. But I'm trying to see if I can find out who brewed this. I do see a Yu- Yuzu farmhouse ale, but I don't think that was the name of it. But, anyways, uh, it was basically just a, a farmhouse ale um, that they put some Yuzu in. And I just thought I could use some more Yuzu. But I'm finding myself wanting to have more like, sour beers right now or fruited beers even though it's you know february yeah i i don't know i don't know what it is i'm just not uh i had a fist city earlier and it took me forever to finish it which is weird because i normally just pale ales i can what's wrong with you i don't know maybe it was all the beers i had yesterday (laughs) no it couldn't have been that (laughs) it could have been all those barrel aged beers people kept and box that's all i had was barrel aged beers and box last night at revolution um i did have i had the nelson hero i think that was the last one that i had oh yeah that's a good one did you like it yeah i did yeah i don't Um, remember if i couldn't remember if i had had it before but i just i know i enjoyed it last night so that's all that matters i don't know what i want to rate i'm gonna i'm gonna rate this with hands since it's in hands um i'm gonna i'm sorry actually i should have let you choose i'm sorry that's okay do you have something do you have something you wanted to have me rated uh, on? i mean hands is probably where i would have went with this anyway so it works cool. out good great minds i almost yeah. said good good minds think alike great minds think alike um adequate minds think alike <laughs> uh i want to give this 3.9 hands okay 3.9 hands it's uh mainly because i was kind of bummed that it wasn't an ipa and it's a hazy ipa yeah. i was expecting an ipa overall i mean that's not really why i'm rating it that way i'm just personally not really interested in drinking like a heavy hazy ipa i kind of just want like a crisp clean bitter ipa and uh you know oh well it's still a good beer though it's tasty i think anybody who likes hazy ipas will will really enjoy this beer it's very tasty um yeah speaking of a hazy ipas it was funny um like we were having dinner and I, I was just kind of casually like started looking at my phone and I had a pop-up from Twitter X. Um, call it Twitter. Just call it Twitter. Nobody yeah. wants to call um, it. Do you, do you know who Josh Noel is? Yeah. Yeah. So he used to work for the Tribune doing ready there. I think he works for Miller Coors now um, in their media department. No, something with Blue Moon. 
but I think that's isn't that Miller Coors? I don't remember. Yeah, it's anyway, own so he, working for yeah, because it's not uh, AB and Bev, it's the other one, so it's got to be Miller Coors. So, anyways, so he was working for um, and he, he posted regardless of what he does, he posted a thing about um, basically a shout out to Old Irving um and how their beers are fantastic and um and i was like kind of reading through the comments on there and people were like yeah you know for somebody like myself who doesn't like hazy ipas like they make the styles of beer you know you know all of their beers are done so well you know particularly their hazy ipas it makes people who don't necessarily like them um it allows them to enjoy them so yeah i was thoroughly impressed uh, reading that and it was nice to see you know people shout out and be like it's probably the best brewery in illinois one of the top breweries in illinois i'm like damn fucking right yeah you know? it is i mean it is again they don't sponsor us uh they're delicious they they, they i there's yet to have a bad beer there i remember yes the, the one thing i remember about josh Knoll is that uh he hates um ab and bev and goose island for selling out yeah and i, I feel like to, i used to follow him on on uh like twitter and stuff and i'm like i I'm done reading. Like, I don't need to hear the whole, we get it. You don't, you're not a fan of selling out. We yeah. It. And I feel like his hatred got worse. So he, I mean, he wrote this book mm-hmm. about, you know, basically shitting on, you know, goose for selling out. And then was surprised when he was no longer being invited to like the media event for bourbon County. <laughs> That's so funny. And I think that's when he kind of like took off and like he like he I don't think he could understand why they wouldn't possibly invite him. I'm like, you, are you kidding me? Like he, he wrote an entire book about them selling out, calling yes. them sellouts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, eh, they, they might not like you, bud. Um, hey, his next book is about Malort. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> okay, speaking of Malort, too, a friend of mine sent me a picture the other day. He's like, he's like, I saw this and I can't stop laughing. And it was a picture of Malort, or, or not a picture of Malort. It was, a, it was a picture of a Malort truck. Um, oh. I was like, I've never seen a Malort truck, but uh, it was funny because, particularly for what it says on the truck, um, let me see if I can pull it up. That wasting too much. Oh yeah, it says it was a picture. It's like uh, an older woman, you know, cringing or taking a shot of Malort. It says, "Do not enjoy." responsibly <laughs> <laughs> i'll send it to you it's pretty funny i mean i've gotten to the point now where like i don't dislike malort but i don't know i just people talk it up like it's the greatest <laughs> thing it's a kind of bitters yeah it's not you know it's not I don't know. Like, come on. It's not it's not the worst thing in the world. No. It's not it's definitely not the best thing in the world. Correct. <laughs> but it, I think in itself in in itself it's it's an experience. Yeah. I'm tempted to get a bottle of it for the Super Bowl. It's a good idea. That's what when I come by, that's what I'll come and have a, a shot of with you. Um oh shit. God, I hope I saved that. So there was another thing I saw. It was a uh, fuck you, it went away. Um there was a uh, again. I think it was right after I saw the Josh Nolan thing. I was kind of scrolling through, and somebody that works um, at the shop JP Graziano's downtown, like uh-huh. it's a, a deli sandwich shop. Have you heard of it? Yeah, sandwiches are fantastic. But somebody from that shop posted a recipe for uh, Jardinera popper dip. What? Yeah. And it was like a super simple recipe that I was like, find it and give it to me. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Please. that. Please. I may also make some smoked queso. Hey, oh, that would be good for the party. I'll find um, I'll find uh, something smoked to have you make. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. I'll be like, mm, you should make this. <laughs> I'm all about making stuff. So. Uh, fantastic well man i think that's it i gotta edit this and go to bed because i'm fucking tired good news is i don't need to edit much because we're professionals baby indeed oh yeah well um and you know we're coming up on something big man well something big well we've already kind of come up on it but we're gonna celebrate it uh, maybe for the next episode i don't know um five years we did oh, yeah. we made five years man Gives us an opportunity maybe to crack open that giant bottle of Wootstout you got me 
uh two years ago for my birthday yeah last, yeah we have two years now yeah or was it last year i don't remember anyway. no i think it was my three it, it was like three years ago funny thought about that before we're done um i before i decided on buying a bunch of taco bell for your party yep. i was like maybe i should get him a bottle of something and as a joke i almost bought that same bottle again <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really funny because then we'd have to drink two of those show up and be like oh here oh i got you one of these already? you already have one of these it's crazy weird <laughs> yeah we're gonna celebrate five years um apologies to matthew for not having on for the Maltese. um I, I did talk to him about that that you know i did say he was gonna be on and then we didn't get him on because you know we had to we kind of the end last year was kind of thrown together it was tough to we got to get better at planning the end of year episodes, especially with holidays and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's just a lot. We got to, we got to start, what we have to do is start recording things in November for that shit and just have stuff lined up. You I know, do like the idea though of um, us doing it like closer to the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and having that be like the first one of like January. Yeah. It's a good way to start the year off. Yeah. Cause then we didn't have like five weeks of fucking non alcoholic beer episodes. Yeah. Somebody, who was asking me? Oh, Mike was asking me yesterday, not uh, Bertucci, uh, Mike, your coworker. And I was yeah. talking to him and he was like, so go ahead. Tony said you guys got some uh, non-alcoholic stuff coming out soon. I was like, it's already out. <laughs> it released yeah. all this month. He was like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mike. Gotta love Mike. Yeah, Mike might come on the show sometime. We'll see. <laughs> we should have him come on and do a live rendition of the intro. Yeah. Yes. Also, you know, he was on board to come by and do uh, the Hot Ones uh, episode where we sat there and did two sauces at a time and then beers in between. I, dude, yes, I'm down. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm really contemplating buying that set of hot sauces. Uh, the only thing is, it doesn't come with the da bomb. Yeah, that's that's the stupid. Well, we have the bomb at the office. So the the idiots bring... in the marketing department of that <laughs> stupid <laughs> the place. You blew it. Uh, yeah, dumbasses. <sighs> um, what was it? Something along those lines. I was going to say. Oh, talking about like packages and stuff like that. I noticed um, Friday when I checked into a beer uh, and untapped. I got like a coupon code for like 10 or 15% off the breweries, like reserve society, which used to, you used to be only like Ron used to have that. Yeah. I wonder if he, I don't, I doubt he still does, no, but he doesn't. the cool thing about it was like you, or the, the, the interesting thing about it at the time was they only shipped in California, right. you would not ship anywhere else. And um, I had just so happened to be in like the LA area once and like he knew I was going. He's like, Can you pick up my allotment? Oh, yeah, yeah. You think you've told ship it back before. to me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But and then he gave me his card and I got to go and drink stuff like that. But anyway, so now they ship to Illinois. Oh, seriously? Yeah. And it's like it's three so th- with the discount uh through um Osner, it was like three hundred bucks okay. for 12 of their limited edition like specialty release bottles and i'm like that's fucking pricey yeah but then it's also like if you ever in la you get the discounts i think and then like tap room only exclusives and like uh stuff like that i think i had a moment where i considered it i was like hmm i know maybe (laughs) (laughs) i mean that comes out to 25 dollars a beer which i it's not the terrible. thing is, those are, I think they're 750 milliliter bottles. Yeah, they, uh, from what I remember there. Um, and I've spent more on beer. That's like, cool. especially with the goose stuff. Like, there's been some, like, which makes me feel like a dick when I complain about, like, you know, $50 Rev four packs. And I'm like, yeah. I, I bought a 16.9 ounce bottle for $30. $30. It's like, yeah. who's the fucking idiot? <laughs> like, <laughs> you are. Yeah. You are, Brandon. Oh, I know. I, I, I wear that badge proudly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But you're not wrong though. I mean it's it's funny how that yeah. works or how your mind works, but the rev stuff is delicious. Indeed. But, um, all right, everybody. That's another episode. Uh Brandon, love you, buddy. 
love you too man we'll see everybody next week maybe for the five-year anniversary or something else we don't know we do everything on the fly yeah. still five years later <laughs> <laughs> bye bye this has been the malting hour be sure to follow us on all social media by searching the malting hour and at the malting you can also follow us individually on social media Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmw81, on Twitter bdub81, and on Untapped as bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.